Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sports Dynasty NFL. My name is Trevor, and this is Warren. How you doing today, buddy? Good, okay. You know, I am just seem to be pretty good about clock management, unlike certain people. So, Yeah, man, I, I feel you, I feel you. Unlike certain people, we don't waste time at also all. don't waste money either. Well, yeah, if, yeah. if I pay highly for something, I expect to use that. Then, yes. You know? Luckily, we don't actually pay for anything. But we, but we don't waste no time to get the news out to you. Um, make sure you like, share, subscribe. We're on all platforms. Um, join the Facebook group. Um, don't waste time and and make sure you get your um your pickums in before before our deadline. You know, a certain coach from Denver would have failed to you yeah know, put him yeah. in because he can't manage any time. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. I definitely would have failed to get a victory or even failed to get it there on time. That's pretty yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. To, huh? But hey, see, I told you I was gonna put a couple jokes in the bottom. Definitely. I mean, we have, there's not much to say about the game. The coach is dumb. Yeah, it is. It, it really <laughs> That's dumb. simple. That I'm already off of Denver. To be 100 honest, I'm already I, done. I'm not a lot. Yeah, yeah. I see a lot of Brandon Staley from last season with the Chargers last year. I see a lot of him just trying to be smug. And what bothered me at the end of the game is, so you, so you completely missed the field goal. You missed the field goal by 64 yards. You let the do that like 25, 30 seconds run down. We had three timeouts. We didn't even have to do. You could have ran another play or two and got a little closer. 64 yards is not Eric could be Justin Tucker. I mean, not Eric could be him. You know what I'm saying? So you had enough time. You had three timeouts. Yeah, you did not try to move against the ball a little bit closer, but whatever, I guess. Again, and, then, and then when you missed, when then when he missed the field goal, right, you're starting to call. The game is already over. You're calling timeouts when they're kneeling down. To me, as Bush League, and the crowd hated it, I hated it too. It just showed that you're an idiot. One, you're an idiot. Secondly speaking, this is a to me, I had like I said, the Broncos winning the division. I don't know if they're gonna win even with 99 games. God, because it's just the, the stupidity of you got, you, got, you got out coached. Out coached by Pete Carroll. Which he's supposed to get out coached. Yes. But you, you there, already, there's common sense things. That everybody in America knew what to do, and your dumbass didn't. Like that's something that was that scares me away. You had Peyton Manning on. No, you had Troy and Eggman, and you had Bug confused as all crap throughout that whole 50, thirty-five second sequence he did, right? Mm-hmm. And then on the other channel, you had Peyton Manning like trying to count time out for him, uh, trying to call out his thing like this. You see Shannon Sharp in the middle, just looking dumbfounded, and you see Eli with a normal Eli face, just like. But not because he's Eli Manning, because he was very confused too. Like the, you had you had legends and you had legendary uh, announcers confused, like don't not understanding. Peyton stressed out. He's like, you know, they're he him and, and Shannon Bites because they're they're, they're ex Denver Broncos, yeah. so know, they're just like confused. You know what's bad? We have Darren Lawski coming at you. That's when you know you you all messed up because this guy is. My, 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 I'm not gonna go there. Yeah, so one, yeah, it was just really bad. It was really yeah, bad. Yeah, there's certain things, and then you had. And then that's not to mention you had the two, 102 yards of penalties from on your team too. That the whole game. Like, so forget now, that. But so, that could yeah. be fixed. The two fumbles on the on the goal line could be fixed. That at the end of the game, I don't think can be fixed. So not only are you bad at managing time, you're bad at discipline too. Yeah. So <laughs> recipe for disaster. So I'm done. Yeah, yeah. I'm out of Denver. Yeah. I, have, I have a free wild card spot open for my team. But we do our revisions in week uh, nine or ten. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm done. Let's let's go on uh, move on to week two. And um there is literally nothing to say about um, you know, the signing that game because it was easily the worst game of the of the way. It was easily it was snoo- it was literally a snooze fest. I literally fell asleep during third. I literally yeah, fell asleep. It was a disgusting game, absolutely terrible. And then Dak, well, I don't know what the hell he was trying to throw at, but well, he's gone for two months, so the Cowboys are finished. So yes, that's it. So we're done. So well, a uh, Philly, I- I'm kind of mad and bet the line for Philly winning the division when I should have. It was plus something too. That would be the easiest money I've won in my freaking life. Well, that's gone. Let's move on to week two, shall we? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Let's do this. We know when the schedule wants to come onto the screen. I don't know why it's happening because it wants to be bugging out. Hey, there I we mean, go. Hey, at least it's not bugging out as much as the Tanya Hackett, though. So that's, that's what's happening. Yeah, 100% right. <laughs> Let's move on to tomorrow's. Is uh, we will, Every time I'm on the on the air, you know, we already got to break the fourth wall and say uh, it's Wednesday. Uh, we're gonna go on to the Los Angeles Chargers going to Kansas City. A very, if you can be red hot after one game, I guess I don't know. I mean, they did be the ever loving crap out of the guys on Cardinals. So I mean, that's something. That's something. That's something better than nothing. I think that this is gonna be a. They favored by four, Kansas City. 
Okay, that's cool. I mean, I know they can read, but I still got to say it out loud. What if they're not looking? And uh, over and under 54 and a half, they're expecting a shootout. They also expected a shootout at the Raiders, but that didn't happen. So, you know, be careful. Now, I'm going to say the under. No, I'm going to say the over because it's a short week for both teams. Interesting. Um, so, so I think I do see a lot of scoring in this game. But, mm. honestly speaking, though the Chargers won last week, I was not impressed. That's why I kind of disagree with you a little bit about the over in was, that game. I was not impressed. I don't like how you look either. I was not impressed. They the the Chargers were literally trying to give the Raiders the game last week. Literally trying to say, hey, hey, we don't want it. Hey, look, kind of reminds me of week 18 last year. We don't want the game. You guys can have it. But you know. Yeah, Thursday night's last uh Thursday night's game last year too against Kansas City. They didn't want to win the game. And then yeah. the, the Chiefs came right back and beat them on <laughs> Thursday night last year. So, yeah, I'm not, I think I think it'll be. I mean, you probably don't agree with me as far as like the over. I think yeah, over. I don't like how they, and I have a feeling the Chiefs' defense is pretty decent. Yeah, I have a feeling this is gonna be a good Chiefs team. So, I'm still gonna say so I look like a genius putting them to win the division. I guess when it was obvious, but whatever. Sure. <laughs> I'm gonna say over. Uh, I think the Chiefs win this game. The point spread does seem four points just seem like a good spread to go with. I agree with you. I that think too. they win by touchdown, at least touchdown. Like I'll say. 34 27. Yeah, 34 27. Yeah, that's 61. You're good. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. You're trying to make sure that's over. Yeah, I'm trying to sound, <laughs> sound like that's 61. You're good. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to mess up too much. Like, yeah, let me move on. But yeah, um, yeah I'm going. I like 31 20. Okay. Jeez, I think it's a pretty handful win. I think, I think it, the Chargers are going to take a little bit more time for them to really uh get things together. Um, based on the way they played last week, you know, the Raiders, I don't know why they were in the stadium. Mind you, I'm pretty sure they're at home. Uh, I don't, I didn't, I hated everything they looked. They, that cheat, the Chargers should have won by like 50 points. It should have been a blowout. They should have put up 40 on them easily. But I don't, there may be time for things to gel out. And then there's no Keenan Allen, remember that in the game? So yes. that's huge. So I like them only getting 20 against this Chiefs defense, especially the, I like the front, the Chris Jones, the Karloftis, and that, that, Thing we call Frank Clark is probably going to playing all right. Uh, thirty-one twenty sounds like a good score, and that's fifty-one under. Like I said, so I'm gonna go with that uh, for this game. Uh, so you want to go by the or under over and unders thing, or you're gonna go by the points on top, like the order we're going because it's different. As you can see, we're gonna go on the one across. Gotcha. So we're yeah. gonna start. We go ahead with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going against going to New Orleans. Interesting enough, I feel like they haven't had one o'clock games in a while. Of uh, Matina too, but uh, Tampa's actually favored on the road by two and a half, and the over under is forty four. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, nobody's injured in the Saints side, and for now at least. And um, I think maybe just Chris Godwin might be out for Tampa, but uh, of course, um, Donovan Smith too. I think is out too. We'll find out by sat by Saturday Saturday's injury reports. But we're doing this Wednesday. Practice hasn't ended, so. That's what we're going with. So I, I think they, I think they're giving Tampa Bay the two and a half just because to Tom Brady, honestly speaking. But I think they, they don't want to say that. Well, the mistakes have been the last four times. Well, that two and a half on the road means that they're actually they're thinking they're actually completely better than New Orleans because usually teams will get a three point ish advantage if they're the hosting team. But since Tampa's basically favored by three, basically. They don't care, and they think Tampa is just better, which I disagree with 100%. I think they're pretty damn close based on what we saw last week. But I guess they got scared because the North Carolina States was down, you know, for like three and a half quarters against Atlanta. And I guess they got fearful from that, so they gave Tampa the points, even though it took Tampa three quarters to score a touchdown against the bum-ass Cowboys. But they didn't, I, I don't know where Vegas' head is at, but that's what they put. Now nah, I got you thinking, huh? Yeah. I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm, thinking, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm still going to go with Tampa. I'm going to Tampa, Tampa too. too. It's just if you everybody has basically have access to fan doing all that now. I definitely will take New Orleans and alternate spread them to like plus seven or like plus ten. Because I don't think it's gonna be any worse than that. There is a really high chance that New Orleans wins this game <laughs> outright. So that's what I would do. I will not take those points if I'm betting this game, no question. And I'm trying to decide if we go over. I think I'm gonna go. Ooh, 44 is a little bit though. Ooh, 44 is a little bit though. 
I'm gonna say. I think it might go over. You're gonna go over, over, but by, by, by like forty eight points. By four points only. That's tough. I'm gonna go under. I'm gonna go under. I'm gonna go. Tampa Bay wins. Uh, twenty four seventeen, something like that. That's forty one. You know that something like that. I'll say Tampa. 25, yeah. 23. Yeah, we don't have to do scores. I'm just yeah. saying. Just, yeah, just, I'm just, saying yeah. I think that they win on the leg, on, on, on the game winning field goal at the end of the game. You know, something that Atlanta couldn't do this last week. <laughs> oh, God. I'm mad like all my underdog picks, too, were like a score or less away from winning, though. Like they were always in the game and something happened. Like I'm pissed about a lot of those picks last week. Whatever. I still went, did decent in the pickums, though. Yeah. Like I was one behind you. Right? No, two. What the hell do mean two? Um, you I've checked I've over it again. It was it was um I had nine. No. Yeah, I did. No, I checked I, I did it. I, and I, I counted because I'm not stupid. We I, have this fight right in the middle of the recording. But we will discuss this right after. It was, it, All was, right. it, was, it was it, yeah. All right. You're trying to play me out the thing, it's cool because uh-huh. it means you know, whatever. Um <laughs> it's, a, gonna find it's out. a competitive mixture after this. Yeah, it's bull crap. I know I got nine, but whatever. A Washington at Detroit. Detroit's only favored by one and a half, which is very interesting. And the uh, over and under is 49. You see, they they thinking they could be some points in this game. Mm. Mm. You know, so Detroit did score 35. Yes. I like Detroit. I like Detroit, too. I like Detroit, too. I don't feel Washington. Washington almost lost to Jacksonville last they week. They should have. They should have. Uh, He's easy and dropped two touchdown passes, so that, that, that works. I mean, it Jacksonville is, it is Travis Etienne. Yeah. Um, You know. Great debut. His boy, yeah. His boy um dropped him. No, it's all good though. Yeah, I should have known. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna go with Detroit as well. I think Detroit wins this game by more than two and a half points. They should win this game at least by, by seven. I down. agree with that. I like that um, too. Do you have you have to said the 49? That's kind of high. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, I like under. I like under as well. Yeah, under as well. Yeah. I'm not really. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. No, I like Detroit. How I, they look. I, I, I like, like them better. I like their front. And the Washington offensive line is as good as it used to be. So I think Detroit's front could really take advantage of that. Um, the only thing that we have to watch out for is if Jared Goff does Jared Goff things like they did in the beginning of that Philly game, which was kind of the start of bringing them down as far as they did before they claw back up. Um, but the Detroit, what I love very much is the Detroit offensive line. They were absolutely sensational. They might be strong enough to withstand, withhold that strength of the Washington Commanders, which is their defensive line. If the offensive line can cancel them out, I like Detroit wholeheartedly. And the Eddie Swift looked good mm-hmm. last week. So definitely Detroit. Uh, Miami visiting Baltimore. Baltimore, see, three and a half. So, but they think they're pretty close in, in uh, strength. I don't, I don't think so either. I love Baltimore in this game. Um, the Miami stuff, I, I, they did not look good to me. Tua did not look good to me. He was taking what was given to him, but at the end of the day, he wasn't even close to catching it at all. If it wasn't for New England turnovers, I don't even know if they have 10 points, to be honest. I, I we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that more on Saturday's show because I agree with you. Um, especially for Miami. AC shakedown. Yes. Especially for Miami, it's um, defensive line. How New England was able to run the ball relatively well on them. They ran the yeah, ball until very well. until they went down, yeah. Until, until they went down and they stopped running the ball. But overall, and, and also, yeah, I'm going to do credit to that too. Baltimore's oh, did I say the over and under? Oh, uh, you said three and a half Baltimore. 44 and a half. I'm sorry. I don't yeah. think I said it. I'm going to go Baltimore to win the game, obviously. Um, cover it by three and a half. I think they went by like six points. They'll, they'll cover the, the points, spread. The um the over under is 44 and a half. I'm going to say under. Okay. Because I feel like I like I feel like we're going to see a lot of running, a lot of runs from both teams. Um I'm not gonna act Lamar to do too much. Um, I'm I'm throwing I'm not gonna lie to you. with uh Rashad Bateman. It's not very, very limited um receivers they have on, on the Ravens. I just I think they're better on the ball more. So they'll, they'll they'll spoil that that soft um Miami D line to, to, to capitalize on it, run the ball a lot more. And I think that Baltimore will, will, will control the time possession overall. Okay. They should win this game. It's gonna be one of those those ground and pound games. You just run the ball, you know, just yeah, I'm I'm going with Baltimore. I will bet Miami though. Like something tells me in my gut. Just I would take the points, the plus three and a half for Miami. But I'd like Baltimore to win this game. I agree with you there. Uh Indianapolis will be visiting its house of horrors going to Jacksonville. I thought you would never say that about Jacksonville, right? They have a house of horror for somebody. Wow. Uh, Indy's actually favored for some reason. 
I, I don't understand it uh, by four. And the over and under is a 47 points. I don't think I like that. I like the under net 100%. And I love Jacksonville at least covering the points. I'm 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 scared to pick them to win. But betting, I w- I'm taking Jacksonville all the way, betting-wise. In the numbers, I hate you. I don't know about winning. But I refuse to. As far as betting, I agree. I'm taking the points in Jacksonville. I'm taking I'm taking it every single time. Mm-hmm. Every single time they play in Jacksonville, I'm taking it every single time. Um, it's gonna be under completely under. Um, but as far you know as what? Winning, no, I'm doing it. I'm as picking as, Jacksonville to win this game. I'm as doing far it again. As winning, I hate it. Colts are, going, are so bad. I'm going to go with Indianapolis to win an ugly one. Listen to me. I'm saying listen, it's definitely gonna be ugly one. I love the under in this game. Listen I'm to about me it. when I say this right now. Indianapolis. As much as I hated you last week in the last the last couple of months, I've, I've cut a, I cut a stand your guts. I hate I hate I hate the, <laughs> I hate your stupid horseshoe logo. I hate it. I'm gonna let you know right now. I'm gonna pick you guys to win this game ugly because if it was point spread, it'd be one oh one. The record might be one oh one. Yes. If you screw me. Again, don't bet on them. What you mean, screw you? No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, about fans. Do hell no. Oh, fans, I'm taking the points. You, you crazy? <laughs> I pick them to win the game. I'm talking about for far as oh, far pickums. Okay, I'm, I'm going for as pickums for, for, for money. I would never bet on Indianapolis ever again. Ever yeah, I'm again. I'm going Indianapolis to win the game. Jacksonville takes the points. And I will be scared of any fantasy people who are Jonathan Taylor or betting people. I don't think I would. I don't think I would take those. Like, if I have John Taylor, I'm probably sitting him in this game, to be 100% honest. Even if you're never supposed to sit someone as powerful as that. Yeah. But the last time they played, they locked him up. And they're going to wind up doing that. They're going to at least focus on him. It's up to Matt Ryan. And I don't trust Matt Ryan. So, me personally. Okay. You want to finish your threat? No. I just let you know. So, yeah. I will go the next, the rant after the one that I want to say on Saturday on the AFC Shakedown will be dedicated to you. Okay. To you. No problem. All right, let's go to the New York Jets visiting the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns are favored by six points. And the over and over, wow, over and over is 40. I, I don't blame them. I don't blame them either. I I believe that, first of all, I think, first of all, Cleveland's favored by six, strictly in the fact that Vegas does not trust Joe Flacco to do anything in yeah, this game. Yeah, and that's a perfect – that's one of the only big uh, spreads that people should bet on. Yes. Like Cleveland, just Joe Flacco. Take it. As you can get it now before that before Zach Wilson comes back. And I, and I also take the under because this is good because the Cleveland Browns are going to run the ball almost the entire game. Uh, they feel that they have a very young D line, a very young D line, and mm-hmm. a very inexperienced where they can run the ball a lot with, with, with Nick Chubb. I truly believe that. I think also, because forty is really low. Yes. It's just... I think. What was the score last game? Twenty-four to three. In Baltimore. Yeah, it wasn't even close. Yeah, you're probably right. It's Joe Flacco. Yeah. Two, Him three. scoring more than seven points is a joke. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, so I'm going to say that. Um, Jacoby Brissett looked, was terrible in the last game, but I do expect him to literally just manage the game to the point where – That's what exactly what he's going to do. You do not make any stupid throws. Hell, you may not have done the ball at all. If Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt are averaging five or more – Yards for carry, they're gonna run the ball the entire game because they they know you're not gonna be able to stop it. So I'm gonna go with the Jets. No, I'm sorry, not the Jets. Ooh, sorry. I'm going with Cleveland. We almost got him. I'm gonna go with Cleveland to win the game and the points. And the points, 100. Yes. percent I think it's very easy. Okay, this the New England Patriots are visiting the Pittsburgh Steelers, and for some reason they are favored by two on the road, and the over and under is 40 and a half. There will be no TJ Watt, and there probably won't be Najee Harris either, I believe. Um, I also think I haven't they haven't finalized it yet. There may be no Adrian Phillips, too. I forget if he's out for a same period of time. Oh, uh, New England's I guess you could say that's safety. Um, so I'm gonna go with it quick. I'm actually picking the winner to win this game. So am I. Picking the winner's game, man. Obviously, well, I guess obviously take the points with minus two. Um, the 40 and a half, that's likely to happen. That's gonna be under 40 and a half, too. Yes, I agree. Um, despite the treachery and the this just 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 the sad state of offense we saw from the wing of the pitchers yes, last I week. I refuse to believe it's um, going to get worse. It's not even so. that. They're playing Trubisky. So 
and then it's whiskey probably not going to have the uh Najee Harris I guess with that offensive line yeah if they somehow do not win this game and go 0 and 2 their season to me is over so yeah I'm going as far as to say that because there is going to be a nice stretch of games but I think either like halfway through November or end of November through December is going to be tough for the Patriots so they need to get all the wins they can get now and get ready for that big stretch of late in the season. They need to win this game. This yes. is a must win. If you're talking about playoff stuff, this is it. Like you have to win it now. You go 0 and 2. That's it, in my opinion. You have to do it now. So yeah. they have to win this game. No, and they're and they're they're hurt. They don't have their best player. So Patriots is on ya. Have fun. You're playing Trubisky. Take advantage. Yeah, I'm glad you took the words out of my mouth as far as that. Offensively, how bad it was we were last week. Like offensively, I refuse to believe we'll be worse than that. The defense, but the, the defense only gave up thirteen points. They only gave up thirteen points, and that's because of one mess up tackle and turnovers. That's the yeah. only reason why they gave up points. Yeah. Overall, the defense played very well for the most part. Even even though they're be, they're be, not gonna beat up now, but they played very well. Um, only forced Miami to three points. So, I'll I'll take that. But as far as offensively. All the issues that's going on defensively for the Steelers, and then another thing too, Kendrick Bourne is going to be playing because I don't know he why. Better. I don't know why he got benched literally for no reason. He's their best receiver. Oh. Like I don't understand it. Don't get me started. I, I, All right. I, oh, Eddie's coming. Yeah. So next, next, yeah, next. Yeah. I'm going New England to win the game. The points in under under four and a half. We're yes. going to do that. Oh, this. Oh my God. Oh my Giants. God. This is Smith is the hardest game to pick. Carolina visiting the New York Giants, uh, the home opener. The Giants are favored by two, and the over and under, what is it, like 20? I can't find it. Do you it, find it? I can't find it. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go down. I have it up. 43. There you go. Four. I'm a little under. I mean, what's it, 20? <laughs> They're going to score? No, they probably will. It'll probably go over that. If you watched last year's game, this, oh my lord! I don't want to remember one that. One of the worst games I've watched all year last year. But Sam Darnold is not playing. Hopefully, yes. Both of these teams are very bad. These mm-hmm. are these, these are both these both teams are not very good. The Giants, yes, actually, literally won in spite of Daniel Jones. If it wasn't for how 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 good um, Saquon Barkley played, they would have lost this game. They would have blown out. But like they'll probably score like three points the most, maybe three points the most. But this, this, this team is not good. This team is not good. Um, You know what? I'm going to go out on the limb and say it's going to go over 43 points. Really? Yep. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. It's going to be – I know it seems impossible, but I'm going to go with it. I think it's going to go over 43 points. Like, it's going to be like a 24-20 game, something like that. As of who's winning, uh, huh, huh. I'm going with the Giants to win this game on sheer fact that Carolina is just as bad and – I know it's a is a no screw me too. I'm gonna go to the Giants too. I know it's oh a, my god, they might go two and zero. You remember the last time they went two and zero? I remember. I remember you mean you speaking about this? How we said the Giants the last time they were two and zero, they were one of the worst two and zero teams in the league, in the league because they were they just they got by. When the hell was this? Um, two thousand and we were still in high school. Yeah, two we were still, we were still in high school. I can't wait to look this up. Yeah, we were still in high school. I, I do remember because I remember when we was I was in the street and they said, like, we'll be two and oh, we two and oh. And I'm like, you're the worst two and oh team in the league. And I remember you saying the exact same thing about it we was in school. And I was like, yeah, this team sucks. I think it was arguing with some a giant fan in school. I think it was in band class. It, it had it had it was in band class. I was still in band class before I dropped out of band. So <laughs> that part you didn't have to say out loud. Yeah. But um, yeah, but um yeah, that was pretty bad. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go put the Giants to win this game. They go two and oh my god! Um, I'm definitely gonna look. This it's up. going to be another ugly game, another ugly game for the Giants to win it. And then, what's crazy about this? They play Dallas next week. We got them. Anyway, we we'll can make fun of that later. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, Seattle will be visiting the San Francisco 49ers. San Francisco at home is favored by nine. I guess I, I actually don't get it. And the over and under is going to be 42 and a half after what happened. I guess they're saying the rain is the reason why they sucked. I'm going to guess that's what Vegas is going with. No. I don't know about that. No. Vegas, don't do that to them. They, they have Sam. They had they had, they had they, they realized that, oh, Seattle only won the game because Denver was so stupid. Denver was so dumb. So we're going to, you know what? 
they should beat the hell out of them. But no, San Francisco, I'm not giving San Francisco no type of credit because you lost to Chicago <laughs> in the way that you did. You lost to Chicago. You lost. You lost. You lost. So I don't want to hear that. Um, Trey Lance did not play well at all last week. No, not at all. And I, I think they, they, they probably say, and, and to me, a lot of these um, NFC West, despite how good or bad the teams are, um, they find ways to, you know, make it very compelling, very compelling and very smash mouth. The nine, the nine points to me is way too high. I don't like it. I'm going to go on the limb. I'm going to pick San Francisco to win this game, but it's going to be, don't, don't take the points at all. And the points, but it's 42 and a half. I'm going to say slightly under. That's time the Giants were towing over 2016. Before that, it was 2009. That, that's what I was thinking about, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they had that one little anomaly season. They didn't make the playoffs that year. When they went no, no, but that, but that 2-0 team, when they were 2-0 in 2016, I, I'm, I was thinking this team's pretty good. No, 2009, they sucked. Remember yeah. that one thing? They, they would have, like, they had lost, like, seven games in a row or whatever. Yeah, this playoffs. yeah that, that was 2-0, yeah. Yeah, so you're right. Um, I'm going with San Francisco. You, This is one of the easiest Seattle bets of all time, probably easier than Mondays because I, that easy Seattle covering against Denver was the easiest thing I've ever seen. Um, they they are not winning by nine points or more. That's not happening. Um, that trade lines is too bad. Um, Seattle and San Francisco, 42 and a half. No, I go, yeah, I go under, you yeah, don't under two, yeah, definitely go under. It'd probably be similar to the to the how Seattle played against um Denver on Monday. I went like maybe 20 to 17, 2019, 2018, something like that. Like something like that. I don't see anybody going past 21 points in this game. Right. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh Atlanta going to Los Angeles Rams. Uh and Los Angeles for some reason favored by 10 and a half points. And the over and under for this game is gonna be 47. Um, that's very interesting that they're favored by that much because I thought Atlanta looked pretty decent, but they are Atlanta. But being Atlanta doesn't mean they're gonna get blown out. It doesn't mean they're gonna choke. Yes. So a lot of games last year where they were supposed to get blown out and they held their own. Most just, of them, yes. Most of them they just lost. So I'm not taking. I'm staying away from ten and a half. Yeah. Any half. point, any spreads that big, I don't like unless it's like the most obvious thing. Since like, like, like last pizza year, being good, like, like you know, two like years ago with the Chiefs were fair by like twenty five points against the Jets, even though they they failed the sport the spread. But they, it was close, I think, though. I think they won by like twenty. Yeah, they won by twenty. Yeah, but they um, but they they didn't score towards the end, towards the end of the game. Yeah, the garbage time out. will kill you. Yeah, yeah. So they still they, they barely missed the coverage. Yeah, I think they barely. I'm pretty they, sure they, they were very close barely, to doing it. They barely missed it, but they're not like the Ravens who will cover those players all the time. Like, there's a reason why both most favorite by that much. They're bullies. Atlanta, I thought they looked really good. I thought their offense was very innovative. Like the way Mariota was playing was very innovative, running around his RPOs, um, stretching things out, running himself. Like, people forget that he's a pretty good runner. Um, you know what I'm saying? They, I thought uh, Arthur Smith did a really good job coaching his offense pretty well, and quarter passes are playing out his mind like he always does. Um, so I really think that the based on what we saw from the Rams on Thursday, which is actually a little scary because they have an extra three days to prepare for this game. Um, based on that, uh, I really like. Atlanta to actually really cut into this thing. I don't see them winning though. I like the Rams to win by about a touchdown. So I will bet the uh Falcons, no question. I will bet them. Uh that 10. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pick the Rams to win the game. Not at 10 and a half, maybe lower, lower than 10 and a half. And the point spread you said is it's 47. I'm gonna say under. I'm gonna say under. That's actually really tough. Yeah, I'm gonna go over by like one or two. It's, it's very tough, very tough. I could definitely see them. I could see like a team winning 24 20. Like, I could see that, uh, which would be a problem for Los Angeles. They only get 24, 24 points if they win. Uh, Houston going to Denver, gonna be the first time Russell was a place against plays with his uh home crowd. So, you're gonna hear a lot of less rides and stuff, even though addition. Uh, Denver is favored by 10. I, I get it, I guess. And uh, the over is going to be 46 points. I don't know if I buy the Houston thing, but I know for a fact Denver is not going to play up to their potential yet. And I would love to see what type of stupidity the coach is going to do this time. Um, but I like Denver. I don't like the points, though. I still would advise not to do the 10 points. But Houston, but I like Denver to win this game. Um, 
I'm sorry, Houston just have no talent. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. Indy's just trash. Like, I, you know, like, I, nah, I'm sorry. Denver has way more talent. I think Denver will do some things well here. I would love to see if they can, because Jonathan Taylor's throwing in for a buck 60. I like uh, Devontae Williams to go ahead and get himself a, uh, get in the century mark this game. Um, But I still don't think they're going to hit the 10 point spread. That's too much. I don't think they deserve, I don't think they deserve to be fair by that much yet until they show it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm not taking the points. The points is too high for me. So I think let's I think probably they, hit a lot of dogs this, this yeah. week as well. I think Denver wins the game, wins this game, maybe by like a touchdown. So like yeah, like a touchdown. touchdown. So I feel the same I way. I think Houston will, like I said, they're not, Playing full stride yet? They're trying to figure yeah. each other out. And under forty six points. And I don't like forty six with that. I don't like under forty six either. Probably more. Their like defense a, actually played decently well. Jerry Hughes, like, just went back in time and just started kicking everybody's ass in that indie team. Braden Smith looked like a looked like an amateur against them last week. So I don't know. I I personally like Houston in this game in terms of points, but the winner Denver Broncos. Yeah. Uh, Arizona Cardinals visiting Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders is favored by five. Raiders all the way. Raiders, I'm taking the points of Raiders. The over and under is 51 and a half. I'm going under. Arizona, how am I having on score points? They have no players. They have nothing. They're trash. You took the way out of my mouth. And at least, at least. The truth. Mc, the McDaniels can't somehow screw this up. Don't with say this that. one. Yeah, I always think this. I always think so when I say that. You're right. It's the Cardinals. Like, they I look, almost want to change my pick now. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm going with the Raiders to win this game too. Again, this game they should have won last week. They got they're gonna re- re- rebound and I won't go as far as they should have won. I mean, but they, they should have they should have won the game as far as like they were trying to give it to them. They just could not capitalize because their quarterback, Derek Carr, was playing scared. Yeah. I don't know about should have won, but I do, but I don't he, he looks so bad. Should I, win this I can't game. see that he's gonna do that again. The Raiders should do win this game. No, I like the Raiders. When I love Devontae Adams game like a buck yeah, sixty. I almost feel bad. I almost feel bad for Kyler who got his, got his money and is like, well, you have nobody to throw the ball to for the six weeks. Sorry, you know sorry, but hey, you just got paid though. You got his cash. What can you say? Make sure you do your homework too. Cincinnati visiting the Dallas Cowboys. I don't even know who's starting for the Dallas Cowboys right now. We don't know yet. Uh, Cincinnati favored by seven and a half on the road, and the over and under in this game shouldn't be very high. It's forty three. Yeah, okay. um, this will be a beating. So Cincinnati, I'm not betting this game though. No, I'm not betting this game either because of how, only because Joe Burrow really scared me in the last game as far as how bad he played. I don't think he played bad a game like that. But then not again, there's no CG Watt in that team, so yeah, so he should be fine. Should be fine. I w- I will bet money. I mean, that's funny that he would throw two interceptions or less in this game. He would not throw four. I will that bet. I will bet. Uh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. But, no, um, this is gonna be. I have a feeling that Joe Mixon is gonna go crazy in this game. I think he. I think Burrow won't throw more than like at most thirty times. And and, and for me personally, I completely lost all faith in the Cowboys. You should. Like, There's no doubt. I, I lost all faith in them watching the game on Sunday when they played Tampa, and I said, "Yeah, this team." We'll be lucky to win nine games, but now that Dak is gone, that's a lot of games. They're probably I have them in the playoffs. I'm my, my prediction, but but afterwards, you should have put it down to four. No, no, I said that I had to win nine games, I know, 10 games with Dak, and now they should win four. And now they be lucky to win six, <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. They, they're garbage. You're this season's over, and it's, it's fine. Season's over, yeah, it's fine. It's cool, it's whatever. You're gonna, you're gonna get champagne next year. Y'all be good, true. But hey, you got that money though. I, I almost want to do a segment that long, but whatever. Um, Chicago will be visiting the uh, Green Bay Packers. Uh, the Packers are favored by 10, as they should be. And the oh, believe, I remember what I said. I said it should be. Uh, the over and under is going to be, what, like 32? Uh, 42. That's a lot under now. Under, yes. Because uh, they're not going to get it together that quickly. Um, actually... I take back the should be. I think Chicago's gonna cover that 10 too. I don't think gonna win though, but I 10 is a lot for a team who can't score. 10, is, 10 is a lot. 10 is a lot. Chicago takes the points. I think it's under, but Green Bay wins the game. But I want to yes. ask a question. I am sick. I understand it's an NFL rivalry. It's one of the most storied fran story rivalries in the league's history. I, I'm just going out what this they're saying. But 
No one wants to see this. Why is this on Sunday Night Football? The last time this was a story rivalry was 2010 in the NFC Championship game. Yes. That was the last time this was a real rivalry. After that, Chicago hasn't no, been relevant in that since. Time. Literally since, since. since. I don't care about 18. That, that was an anomaly. That was fake. Your quarterback was Trubisky. You had no real chance. No. Let's stop it right now. This franchise is garbage. And Green Bay is going through too much right now. To, to, no one wants to see this crap. I don't know why they put this. It's a snooze fest. It's a snooze. Only people want to see this Chicago and Green Bay fans. And even Chicago fans don't want to see it because they know it's going to happen to them. They're going to lose to Aaron Rodgers again to the mayor. I don't Green think Green Bay wants to, wants to watch it right now either after next week. Yeah. Or last week, rather. Yeah. But at least they're going to win, though. So screw that. Yeah, but like if you got to win, does it mean – Anything good, you know what I mean? Like you get it, you can come off and win pissed. Like that, I've, we've been that many times. Yeah, you have many times. We may be going through that this weekend. So, uh, Tennessee going to Buffalo. Uh, Buffalo favored by ten at home. That's a little surprising. Um, I guess the Giants loss will do that to you. And uh, the over and under is forty nine and a half. Um, I, I still wouldn't bet ten points because too much. But out of all the big margin points, that is the most realistic that they're going to win by like twenty. Buffalo is going to whip their ass. I just wouldn't put my money on it. Um, I would. I would. But yeah, I'm not. I, I, I think they are, though. And they, I think the score will go a little bit over. I think the score will be like 35 to like 20. It's probably when the score is going to be something like that. Buffalo is going to be handily when this game and cover the 10, but I still wouldn't bet it because I like those threads. I've been bit by that before. So. Same, same. I agree. But, yeah. But, but they're just better. You saw this, what happened with to Tennessee last Sunday is gonna continue to happen. It's just the beginning. This is not a good roster. I will not be surprised by November. You will see Malik Willis playing. I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe October. <laughs> you maybe, went that far. Maybe October. This is a bad roster. Everybody draft him. It's not a good team. It's really not a good team. The Giants, dude. They ain't got ran on like something serious, too. They did. So like, well, man, Josh with... Allen and <laughs> Miles Sanders is going to – Miles Sanders, sorry, wrong one. Um, Daniel Singletary is going to do. I don't know what it is. I always confuse those two. I think because I'm staring at Philly because they're next in the last game to go over. Man, this, this is the first Monday night game. Not the only. It's the first. Yes. Monday night game. I think that's why I said Miles Sanders. Well, let's go over with them, shall we? Uh, Minnesota will be visiting the Philadelphia, uh, almost the 76ers. I can't wait for basketball. I was thinking that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Minnesota will be going to the Philadelphia Eagles. And they are favored at home by two. And the over and under for that game is going to be 51. And I like over in that game 24. Um, there's one problem with this. And it's not on, it, it's a non-football concern, but it, it's something that is that is real. And Kirk Cousins on a Monday night lights game is always a recipe for disaster. I will be picking Philadelphia because of that, but there's always a time where that has to go away. It could be now. But I don't see how the Minnesota defense is really going to stop the Philadelphia run game. You know what I mean? Like, I think out of all defense, I think the Philadelphia has a bigger chance of stopping Minnesota when it matters versus the other way around. Even though I do, I do foresee Justin Jefferson just averaging 156 yards a game for the season because I think he's going to be just, just, just Jesus this year at this point. He might be the offense player of the year. Like, I, I, I – I think him and the coach have something, and I think he's going to make sure he gets open and gets catches every game. So betters on player props, just put the over on Trent Jefferson every game until it goes over 100. <laughs> just, just do it. He's going to get it. So, like I put over 82, I think it was, for the game making. He got that one quarter. So just, <laughs> just Justin Jefferson is going to be a force this year. But I, I trust Philly's roster a little bit more. I think you're going to see the, the 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 deficiencies that the Minnesota defense has that you weren't that you weren't able to see last week because Green Bay is going through their own little offensive woes right now. I think Philly will explode it. I think Philly's going to come out hot in the gate for the next few weeks, looking crazy until they finally meet the maker at some point. We'll we'll talk about that on the review show on Monday. But I like Philly. Uh, cover is only two, so I could still cover the points. I like the over fifty one. I'm gonna go with Minnesota win this game. I don't think it's stupid to say that. I think it's very close. Minnesota. I do find I think that everyone that has to get the proverbial monkey off their back. And I think Kirk Cousins will look at the proverbial monkey off his back. I see. It. I do feel that this I think it's gonna be high scoring, definitely high scoring. Yeah. I'm gonna have them over, definitely. But I have Vikings plus two winning the game. And yeah, I think I think I think they're gonna find a way to get it done. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done. It's going to be tough. I can't wait to see it, though. That's going to be the Monday night game that I'm going to uh, watch more right. than the uh, other one because 
Buffalo is going to just whip Tennessee's ass. It's just that simple. So we're done. Yes. Make sure you, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Um, make sure you get your picks in for the pick'em sheet. The deadline is Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, 20 minutes before the game. Um, make sure you get it there on time. You don't want to be left out looking dumb like some people we know. That being said, peace, love, applesauce. We're trying to keep subscribers, my man. Are we talking crap about like that? I'm not talking about them. They know. They know what I'm talking about. We're talking about our, 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 our good friend Nate. Oh, you just you just said it my loud. All right. Yeah, I got good friend Nate. Um, Nate Hackett. Yeah, don't be like him. <laughs> Coach Tulio never. That's all I gotta say. But uh, <laughs> peace, love, Adams. I'll see you soon. <laughs> uh, peace out, guys.